Madison High School is as normal as any other high school. Students deal with the same issues and problems. One issue dealt with is drug abuse. Even though the faculty and administration crack down, students still include drugs in their everyday life. question who's the parents of these kids and what We're the same as any other school. We're better than some and we're, we're not as good as others. It's, I don't know that you can put us above or below anyone. How could someone be so heartless? How could someone be so depressed? How could someone Anything that you could think of has been abused by our students that I know of. I know I've had students in the past five, five or so years with heroin. Well, not that they had it in school, but they've admitted to abusing it. You know, cocaine, crystal meth, marijuana. You know, it's not a big number, but just about anything you could think of, somebody there knows how to get. It's a big issue, not not the drugs in and of itself, but because of the drug culture, it creates other problems, such as theft, a lot of angry behavior. You know, it, it spurns a lot of that type of activity from the use of the drugs. You know, people have to pay for them, so they're stealing calculators or cash out of the locker rooms. There's only a couple things that can result in extended drug use. You're either going to end up in jail, you're going to end up dead from, from an overdose, or you're going to end up on the streets looking for a job. Those are basic results from drug use. I basically will uh, share with you that drug use is more reflection of society. So schools are a little mini society. So the problems you see that are in society, you're going to see in your schools. So is there a bigger problem in schools than outside society? No, drug use is a problem in society today. So whether you're working with adults or you're working with teenagers, the, the issues are the same you know, at, at both levels in that. So you have to approach it. So whether it's we're talking about school violence or violence in normal in society, yes, it's an issue in society, so it's going to be uh, an issue with kids at school because school is a society of its own. Um, same thing with drug use, same thing with other issues, uh, maybe like relationships, dating, those type of issues. There's a, certainly some issues or problems in society, so you're going to see them in schools also. I'm a former drug abuser and a current student at Madison High School. Um, they searched me for cigarettes because somebody told them that I had them on me and they ended up finding them on me. So um, I got a ticket and suspended for three days and I had to go to court. Well, you know, it all started out with, you know, just cigarettes and getting suspended and, you know, with the drugs. And when you have no money, then it went to stealing. And then, that the DH and eventually it will lead to jail. When I look back on everything that happened, the consequences that I had to face was just unbelievable. You know, I was locked up in DH twice. Uh, I was under 30 days of house arrest. You know, they put an ankle bracelet on you, they know when you leave, they know when you come home. And you know, if you sneak out or whatever, you go back and there's nothing you can do. You're not allowed seeing your friends. They can't come over and you can't leave. I'll just like get, keep your grades up, you know, stay tight with your family and your really good friends because when you know you start heading down the wrong path, they're gonna be the ones that pull you back. Try to figure out why we like I don't know man, I'm like 13, you know, and like my, it was Christmas Day, my mom, you know, she she, she smoked a joint with me, but that was like the first time I ever got house with my mom, so like I don't know, from there on out, you know, I was like, me and her would smoke like every day, you know, I'd be like going with my friends, smoking weed. And then I kind of got, you know, a little trouble with the law, you know, so it's like smoking weed and I think clearly like I threw a spike strip out on the road. I don't know, it goes on a little bit and then my mom like started selling mad drugs, you know, and I'm like smoking every day, you know, kind of, you know, blowing a little cocaine here with her. And like my house got raided. So my mom went to prison and like after that, dude, I started drinking and smoking and whatever, dude, every single day, you know, getting all kinds of trouble. I got, like, a disorderly conduct ticket, man, you know, being stupid, going smoking weed out in the lake when it froze over. Just, just stupid stuff, man. My mom went to prison. I went to my mom's friend's house, you know, and they, they, they smoked weed too, man, so it just, just made it worse, man. And then I got 
a possessing charge with my friend. And, you know, I just totally got caught with weed and whatever. And um, that was pretty much the end of it, man. Cause you know, my grandma, my head, I had my grandma pick me up, and then she drove me back to you know her house. And I'm like, you know, telling her to take me back, you know, cause he's like family, you know, and like it's just a big controversy. So like, you know, she kind of helped me out and brought me where I am today, and kind of pushed me into rehab, but you know, it was still my own choice at the same time, so. I don't know, man, I kind of feel like, you know, I'm getting sick of doing the right thing all the time, but it's yeah, worth it, man. It. Yeah, it's worth it, man. I'm on the verge of like getting my license in a car. You know, my grades are going up, <clears throat> graduating. I wouldn't have graduated if I didn't quit. Yeah, I'm going to Lakeland, man. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's ever our, our total responsibility or a parent's total responsibility. Uh, there's an old proverb, and the old proverb, you might have heard this proverb, but it takes a village to educate a child. And I think that sort of fits here, meaning that it takes a lot of support systems, you know, whether it's be the school personnel, whether it's your parents, um, whether it's your church people, whether it's uh, community, political uh, people in various positions. It's gonna take everybody working together to help uh, kids, you know, make good choices, to give them support when they fall into, you know, uh, when they made a bad choice and to try to help them overcome that. So it's really not one, one sector or one aspect of it. It's really got to be everybody working together. My job as a police officer in Painesville is to uphold the laws and the constitution of the state of Ohio. Uh, protect the citizens, and I'm also the canine handler, so I use on canine calls uh, such as drug searches, tracks, building searches, and evidence and article searches, and suspect apprehension. My dog's name is Leica. She's a seven-year-old German Shepherd from Europe. Uh, drug dogs are trained. Uh, this one in particular are trained in all four odors of narcotics, uh, such as the four odors are cocaine, marijuana, methamphetamines, and heroin, and any and all derivatives and not limited to hash, ecstasy, uh, crack cocaine. Uh, we train the dogs over a series that we call searches. Uh, we play the simple child's game of hide and seek. We hide the drugs and they find the drugs. The dogs smell in layers. Uh, they'll smell, if you were to put uh, marijuana in a package and then cover it in mustard and then cover it in plastic and then cover it in a hamburger, the dog would smell hamburger, then the plastic, then the mustard, and then it would smell the drugs and it would say, oh, there's the drugs. And that's what they need. We come in, I usually try to bring three or four dogs and we sweep the school. We search the lockers, uh, sniff the lockers, and oftentimes we'll sniff the vehicles outside. All right, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you a little demonstration on uh, narcotics detection. If you'll notice, we have a file cabinet there, and there's a little hole in the wall. Sit. In that hole in the wall, there's a hamburger. Dog, these dogs do not eat people food. They don't have any knowledge of it. They don't want it. It's not a reward. Uh, we have a lot of times somebody will say that your dog gave a train response to my car because I had cheeseburgers, hamburgers, Taco Bell, and cookies inside, or dog food. It's not the case. These dogs are trained to find the odor of narcotics. Destroy to